right now on Upfront. School showdown. We need to oversight our schools, take back our schools. 90 districts going to referendum Tuesday, $252 million on the line in the state's largest district, growing business backlash. How come those resources haven't led to better outcomes? And now Milwaukee Public Schools Superintendent Keith Posley is here to respond to it all. Can you explain where this money from this referendum would go? Then the new mayor, Milwaukee Mayor Cavalier Johnson facing re-election his new promise. I certainly do not agree with their leading candidate, uh, Donald Trump. Just months ahead of the Republican National Convention in Milwaukee, and just hours from Trump's first campaign stop in Wisconsin, plus the mayor's opponent. Protesting Biden. Biden, Biden, you will see. The push for Democrats to vote uninstructed Tuesday. Hiba Muhammad with the group campaigning this weekend, plus Trump campaign national spokesperson Caroline Levitt. And embattled city attorney, a staff exodus, accusations of harassment. It was a toxic work environment. Very toxic. Toxic for me. Now, Democratic State Representative Evan Goyke attempting to unseat Terman Spencer. We hear from both just moments away. This is Upfront with Jaron Jordan and political director Matt Smith. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Polls open Tuesday morning for Wisconsin's spring elections and presidential primary. Former President Donald Trump will be in Green Bay Tuesday night, his first campaign stop to Wisconsin this cycle. The implications for Trump and President Biden not significant, except maybe for perception. More on that in a moment. But first, voters in some 90 school districts statewide will be asked to approve school referenda, including the largest in Milwaukee. Milwaukee Public Schools is asking for an additional $252 million a year. Now, for Taxpayers, that's about a $432 increase on a $200,000 home. Hundreds of thousands of dollars have already been spent in both support and opposition to the referendum. Dr. Keith Posley is the Milwaukee Public Schools Superintendent. He joins us now. Superintendent Posley, welcome to Upfront. Thank you for having me. Early voting is already underway. Folks head to the polls in Milwaukee on Tuesday. Have you done a good enough job uh, explaining this referendum? selling this referendum? Yes, I'm, I'm just excited over the overwhelming support that we have had from our governor, our mayor, our county executive, former lieutenant governor, and all types of community members that have shared their support and talking it up. It's just been great. One major point of criticism is that MPS has not done a good job explaining why this money is necessary, is needed. It will be a significant burden for some families. Can you explain where this money from this referendum would go? Yes. You know, we came out to the voters in 2020 asking for a referendum to meet the needs of our students. Our students were not receiving art, music, physical education, and library media specialists in their, in their schools. And so since that particular time, we have been able to get uh, art, music, physical education into our classrooms, smaller class sizes, psychologists, social workers, school counselors, and a number of th different things to meet the needs of our students. So if they're getting that now, why do you, why are you asking for so much more money from, from the public? Because we have to maintain that. We have to maintain uh, to be able to do that for our young people. We went to our um, community for that support in 2020, and so therefore we are right now at a uh, financial cliff and so therefore, and you have to also look at the rate of inflation has not kept up with uh, spending. And when you look at none of us could imagine there was going to be a, a world pandemic and none of us has seen that before. And just the cost that uh, afraid with that and what we need to do for children is the reason why we are in this situation. As you know, some major players have come out in opposition of this Northwestern Mutual CEO, MMAC, which has spent more than $400,000 opposing this. Just this week, the Greater Milwaukee Committee, 200 plus business and civic leaders, their president, mm -hmm. Joel Brennan, a former member of the Evers administration, mm -hmm. told us this recently. Take a listen. Do you feel that there are more questions than answers you have about how the money will be spent? Well, I think there's lots of questions both around how the money will be spent, but also the process that led us to this. Like, what's gone on over the last several years since MPS passed an $87 million referendum four years ago? It got significant community support. Since that time, there have also been hundreds of millions of dollars that came in through COVID relief money. I think part of the question that the community is asking is, how come those resources haven't led to better outcomes? And more importantly, what would these $252 million do towards better outcomes for our kids? I know you and Joel have talked. What is, it, what is your response to that? Well, I would just say that we're making progress in the wake of a pandemic. And we are, making, we are moving 
children every single day in the Milwaukee public schools. And, and, and just like uh, we did, I, I explained earlier, none of us could imagine that we were going to have a pandemic. Those are some of the things none of us could, uh, we're all dealing with the rate of inflation. Inflation is rising for everyone, and we, it's costing everyone even more. And, and it costs more to, we can do less, we can do less with what we have right now. I'm curious, why don't you think you've been able to get some of the business community to get on board this year with this referendum? Well, I'm, I have, I'm really 100% unsure of that, because I have, I have made it, made myself very available to support and talk with them, to walk us through the numbers and looking at what we're doing and doing those kinds of things. And, 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 and I just say that it's all about children. This is, and you know, and I'm just, a, I will say to any business community member that the children is the lifeblood of this organization and the lifeblood of the city, this state, and their future workers. What happens if this fails on Tuesday? Will schools be forced to close? Well, we have gone out to our community and we have a list of a uh, number of different things that we are going to look at and, and we are going to follow that list. There will be cuts. And so therefore the programs that we, I just talked about in art and music and physical education, smaller class sizes, all these things are in jeopardy. And so that is what we want to make sure. That's the reason we're making this call, this request in order to be able to meet our students' needs. Is that a certainty if this were to fail on Tuesday that there will absolutely have to be cuts, schools may be forced to close? Absolutely. We have prepared and we have a referendum budget, a yes referendum budget, and a no referendum budget. And in the no referendum budget, it's major cuts. Milwaukee Public Schools Superintendent Dr. Keith Posley. Dr. Posley, thank you so much for your time and perspective. Thank you. Milwaukee Mayor Cavalier Johnson also on the ballot Tuesday, the position with statewide implications. Johnson received 87% of the vote in February in the February primary. His challenger, David King, received 10%. I want to ask about the shared revenue deal, which was a big, uh, a big item in the legislature last year. Since that passed and since we've kind of gone into this post shared revenue era, what type of work are you still doing with Republicans in the state legislature? The other place where I want to work with Republicans is, is on this issue of gun violence, right? Because at the local level, we don't control gun law. I wish we did, but we don't. Uh, that's a state level and a federal level responsibility. And so uh, I would like to see uh, Republicans, you know, look at what's happening on the ground here in Milwaukee. For instance, right, we've got people who uh, have guns that are in their car and they drive those guns into the city and they'll go to events or whatnot. We know that there are people who will go to those events and break into the car with the sole purpose of stealing the guns in order to commit crimes elsewhere in the neighborhoods across the city of Milwaukee. Well, that, that I think is an opportunity for us to be able to work together, right? Um, if folks are bringing their guns in, knowing that they're likely to be targeted for stealing, uh, and there are people who are stealing the guns, there should be penalties on, on both sides of this, right? You've got a responsibility as a gun owner to make sure this gun is locked away, to make sure it's you know, stored uh, properly, to make sure that it's left at home, so we should increase some penalties there. And then for individuals who are actually committing the crime of stealing the gun, we should increase penalties on those folks too. I think there's space for us to work together in a bipartisan way to address that issue. You've said uh, before that having the RNC in Milwaukee is a win-win for everyone, regardless of uh, political affiliation. Donald Trump is likely to be the presumptive nominee named on stage at Pfizer Forum. What do you make of, of him being the nominee for the Republicans heading into the fall? Look, I, I, I've said from the beginning, from the very, very beginning of this, um, when we were initially recruiting the RNC to come here, um, I've said in my media appearances with the RNC when they were recruiting volunteers, I've said you know, so many times, I don't know how many times uh, uh, I've said it overall, um, but, and I'll say it again today, like, I am not a Republican, uh, I do not agree with the GOP platform, and I certainly do not agree with their leading candidate, uh, Donald Trump. Um, that being what it is, uh, Donald Trump, uh, it appears, will be the presumptive nominee on the Republican side. This, I think, is an opportunity for us to take their money and then beat them in November, and that's exactly what I want to see. Where we stand today, the shared revenue bill is enacted in law, it is something that has passed. Is that something that you think Milwaukee benefits from, or do you not agree with the shared revenue bill? Well, I, I, I'm not totally in agreement with it. It is something that we would have to go back and show, you know. What don't you agree with, uh, with the bill? Well, look what happened with the shared revenue bill, right? It allowed them to raise our sale taxes up, right? If we was doing what we supposed to do, 
sale taxes should never have to be raised. What do you make of Donald Trump being the presumptive nominee to be named on the stage at Pfizer Forum for the uh, Republican National Convention this Sunday? What do you mean? Would you have pushed as hard to get the RNC to come here to Milwaukee? I'm not sure. I'm not sure to say yes, I would for the RNC or the DNC. Financially, it's going to benefit some people, but, uh, but again, which, who is it going to benefit? What about the small business owners? If you're not part of the clique, those small business owners is not going to benefit. All right, so former President Donald Trump scheduled to be in Green Bay Tuesday. Coming up, the presidential primary. Will Democrats protest President Biden? And what will Trump say in his first Wisconsin appearance this year? We're getting to it all next.